Hello, so today we'll be going over just the basics of CAD, um, more specifically in Fusion 360, but this is meant for beginners or those who are just kind of um, switching over from another CAD software and want to know, you know, kind of how to use Fusion 360 just off the bat. I'll try to keep this quick so that you can just get started immediately, but today we'll only be covering um, 2D drawings and just kind of the basics of the interface. So this is a this is the um, outline that we'll be talking about today. Um, so first of all is the view cube as you'll see at the top there. So the view cube is this thing you see in the top right corner. It's kind of common to most CAD programs, but if you click it with your left mouse button and hold it, you'll see that you're rotating your view um, around. It's kind of hard to see with um, no drawing here, but if you actually go to a drawing, for example, move it around, you can see that um, you're able to see different viewpoints of your model. If you click on just any side, it will rotate there. Um, you can rotate along the face as well using these arrows at the top. Um, you know, of course you can hit the sides to get a side view. And then, um, and yeah, so this is the view cube. It's pretty simple. And um, let's just start off with sketches because that's probably how you want to begin um, most of your CADs. So up here's your toolbar. On the left here, you have create sketch, which is what you want to start out with. Um, always try to use, you know, one of these axes to start out with. Um, I'm just going to start with the top. Um, so now you see the view cube has automatically uh, moved its view to the top to indicate this. And um, now we're looking straight down on our model. Um, and to just to start out with how you how to make lines and everything, um, the line tool is, of course, pretty self-explanatory. Give it one click, um, and then you hit it once, and then you hit it another time, and that draws a line, right? And you can continue drawing lines, it's pretty nice. But something that you'll notice here uh, that we will definitely need to you know, go over a bit is um, all these lines are blue, and that actually indicates something about your drawing that you should be aware of, and that's, for example, if I draw a line here, right? And then let's just say that I want that to be 2.5 inches exactly. I press enter. This line is black. Um, now, if the line is black, it means that it's constrained. And you always want all of your drawings, no matter what kind of CAD you're doing, all of your drawings should be black. Um, and the reason is because if it's black, it means it's constrained and the program knows uh, exactly what you mean when you draw this line. So if you see here, if I click on it and try to move it, it's not moving because it's properly constrained. But if I move over to this blue line, even though I drew it out like this, I can just take the line, right? Just take any kind of point and just drag it around because it's not completely constrained. The program doesn't exactly know um, the dimensions, the angles, everything. It's, it's kind of loose. And um, you don't want this obviously in any sort of final assembly because with any click, you're going to, you're going to draw, you're going to drag the, uh, the entire model around. And so just to briefly go over right now, I'm just going to delete all these lines by selecting it and then hitting the delete button, but I'm going to go just briefly over the, what constraints, um, mean and how you should be using. It. And so you saw here that I made a line, um, you notice a little icon popped up. That icon is actually the, um, you see in the bottom right corner here, it says vertical constraint. So that's a geometric constraint. And those are the ones that you see up here next to your drawing tools. These are the constraints, these red icons. Um, and you also see that this is constrained by a dimension, which is just explicitly saying that it's exactly 2.5 inches. Um, so you'll see that how this line is constrained both in length and both in direction because it's constrained to be exactly vertical using the vertical constraint and um, exactly 2.5 inches um, in the um, in the lengthwise dimension. And of course, there's a lot of different dimensions that you can have. So say, for example, that um, I have a line that I want to actually be 45 degrees and 3.5 inches long. So I'm going to put 3.5, right? Um, then I'm going to hit tab to go to the degrees. And I'm going to hit in 45. I'm going to press enter. So you see how this is also completely constrained because um, you, know, you have your angle, you have your length. Um, and you'll see how the reason that it is black is because it's 45 degrees relative to something that is completely constrained, which is this dotted line here. 
Um, and this dotted line has that horizontal constraint, as you can see in the bottom right corner. And um, the dotted line indicates a construction line, which is going to be really useful if you're going to be um, doing any sort of complicated CAD, because a construction line is basically just the line that you want there to constrain other lines or constrain other objects or just kind of be there as a measurement tool. Um, but you don't want that you don't want that to actually be part of your CAD. And so it becomes a dotted line. The the way you actually make a construction line, because this one was automatically generated by us when we made that angle, is if you um, select the line um, and let's just make that 1.5, um, press enter. Um, you see on the right side, you have the sketch palette. You can actually just select the line and then hit construction and it becomes dotted. And yeah, that's your construction line. You could also just select construction and then, you know, do your line there. Uh, let's just make it not 1.2 or something. And you can see that also makes it a construction line. Now, one thing that actually happens pretty often, um, you should totally avoid doing this, but sometimes you just inevitably have a lot of lines on top of each other. And the way you can actually, um, the way you can actually select one over the other, is uh, if you if you're hovering your mouse, you know, over the the multiple layers, you can just click left mouse button and hold. Um, and what happens when you hold is that it selects everything um, that you've selected, and you can see here it pops up as depth, and you can select which line you're actually trying to select. Um, a few more tools that I want to go over. Um, you know, these are pretty self-explanatory, but this is the rectangle, you know, it easily makes a rectangle for you. You know, make sure you have your constraints all all well and done out. And when you make an enclosed shape, you have this uh, shaded area of blue, which means um, this can be made into a 3D object because this is now a face, but we will go into that. A circle, uh, yeah, it's a circle. So you specify the diameter, um, not the radius, which, um, I'm pretty sure it's a setting you can change, but yeah, so that's a circle. Um, and you know, you have your splines and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's all I'll go over for these little sketch tools here. The rest of them, you know, you can hit the drop down, and these are pretty self explanatory. If you're going to be wanting to use any of these other ones, then I'm sure there's going to be more tutorials about those tools specifically. But now again, I want to go back to constraints because um, because they they are really this the critical part of your drawing. So you've already seen the horizontal and vertical constraints. Those are by you know just de facto the the things that are completely horizontal and vertical defined by the fusion axes. So you see like on the view cube here, you have y, x, and z. Um, z axis oh z axis is coming out uh, this way downwards. Um, Y axis is coming out of the page and uh, X is going to the right. But you can see that um, if you hit horizontal or vertical, they'll align with one of those principal axes. But if you have perp um, but if you have where is it? Perpendicular. Perpendicular actually just means that uh, the line will be perpendicular to whatever line you selected it to be. So for example, if I have um, if I have just a line that's just kind of goofing off over here. You can see that it's blue, even though I've said that it's four inches long. It's because it's it's kind of loose. It doesn't really know where it's supposed to go. And so the way I can restrain that to be perpendicular to this line, for example, is I hit the perpendicular constraint, you know, and I, hit, I select the line that I want to set perpendicular with and select the line I want to be perpendicular to. And you can see that the perpendicular constraint pops up there. And now the line is black. Um, Another nice little, another thing is the coincident, and that's of course just that two points should be on top of each other. So say that I arbitrarily select a random place to start this line, um, and I come out and I make it four inches again. You can see that it's still blue, even though it's perpendicular and I've defined the length. It's because it doesn't know where along this line it wants to be. And so the way I can do that is I can hit coincident, Right, because coincident is selecting two things to be completely on top of each other. I can select this line and I can select this point. You can see that now it's completely black because now it knows that it's defined on that point. 
Um, one thing to be careful of, do not use fix and unfix. Um, because that that's basically like the equivalent of hard coding when you're programming. That's that's like saying I can't handle my dimensions well enough and I can't handle my constraints, so I'm just going to fix this onto the board, like just a pin uh on the sketch board and just say that I want that to be there. That's never a good thing because you really want to be defining everything around the origin and everything relative to each other. Um the reason being if you get a really complicated drawing, you get a really complicated CAD later, and you want to change one little dimension. So say like, I don't know, this is the centerpiece to my centrifuge, um, and oh no, I realized that um, I, I actually need a, I need a 6.25 diameter. I changed that, right? And, okay, that lagged a bit, but I changed that, and because all a lot of other a lot of these other lines are defined and constrained to that centrifuge point, um, that might completely break your drawing, especially if you have a fix and unfix, because that's going to fix it to the board. It's not going to fix it to um, the things that you want it to be defined relative to, and so that's why I would advise against using fix and unfix. Midpoint is pretty cool. It's just like along any line, you have a midpoint, um, and it allows you to select. That's, it's basically the coincident, but to the midpoint of a line. I won't show you that there, but it's pretty self-explanatory once you want to use it. Parallel is, you know, of course, pretty, pretty self-explanatory, but I do want to show you. Actually, let me combine the midpoint and the parallel just to show you. And again, just another arbitrary line that's completely horribly constrained. Uh, first, let's make it perpendicular to this line. Okay. Next, let's make it a midpoint. Uh, to this line. Whoops, I think I need to hit this one first and then this one. Or actually, maybe I just do not understand how to use the midpoint. Um, maybe it's between two points. Read actually on it. Constraints a point or object in the object. So, well, that is that is interesting. Uh, maybe it's because it can't be parallel. I delete that parallel constraint. Um, should I hit the mid. Yeah. Okay. So it it, <laughs> it tried to uh, flip it onto its. Well, that's not what I expected, but. Well, I I guess that kind of shows that you know if your tools aren't working, uh, you could just try deleting some of the constraints and seeing what is exactly going on. Um. So that's interesting, but I do know that when you are making a line, you see that it locks to the midpoint, that triangle there. You want to just start at the midpoint of a uh, of a line. You can see that um, right here, it's completely constrained because I have the length, I have the angle, and I have the starting point, which is at the midpoint. But anyways, I digress. So let's just, whoops, let's do that. So again, just showing the parallel constraints. I'm gonna do this really quickly. Um, let's start at the midpoint. Let's go out here to six. Um, I can not do this perpendicular, right? Because now the angle is not constrained. I don't have to define this as being perpendicular to this line. I can just define it as being parallel to this line. And that's gonna serve the same purpose. So I think that kind of, that kind of wraps up the constraints for our 2D sketches. Um, a quick note, um, I was talking earlier about parameters, so something that you can do is of course have, you know, your parameters, um, you, you can have parameters when it comes to you making your complicated designs and the way you do that, you go under modify, and you have change parameters, make a user parameter, call it whatever you want, let's say length, uh, in units, I want inches, let's say 2.5 inches, right? And the way that I can actually use the parameter is I can just go in here. I'm going to double click on that dimension. I'm just going to type in length. And you can see that is fx 2.5. So the useful thing about that now is since it's defined by the parameter, if I ever want to change this length variable, I just change it to 7. The sketch automatically updates to make uh, this line of 7 length because it's defined by length, not by an explicit digit. So that's going to be really helpful kind of in the future if you're doing, you know, those complicated designs. Um, so I think 
um just a couple um you know th there's just a couple of a couple of things left i think i've talked over most of the um most of the fundamental aspects something that you c that might you might find pretty useful is if you press s um you can actually just search up uh any tools that you can find say i want to find the perpendicular constraint uh there you go i can just search it up by pressing s um over here you have your browser which uh you can you know browse some of your other cad files and um you know you can get some pretty cool stuff but um in addition you know you you also have you know different options here that you might want to explore later um these are all pretty cool but i think for now um you know that's basically all i really want to cover um and so thank you so much for watching and um i'll see you guys next time